Whoa. Well, good morning, bass fishing freaks. Today, we're talking about the Whopper Plopper and how it can catch some big fish. Now, this isn't one of them, but the Whopper Plopper is a great bait. We're talk all about what you need to do and how you need to use it to catch a lot of fish on it. Let's go. I don't know if you saw when I actually set the hook on that fish or not, but you want to make sure that you actually feel the fish with your rod before you kind of lean into them. Now, if you switch out your hooks to these uh, fusion hooks, and they're not the only hooks on the market. I really like them. I think they work really well. Obviously, they hook them really good. But, you know, one thing that you want to uh, do is, again, make sure you feel that fish with the bait before you kind of lean into them. You know, a lot of times, again, you're gonna have some fish that miss it. So make sure you feel them before you lean into them. And that way you might actually have a chance if, if you set the hook hard when that fish first hits it and you don't feel anything, you've lost your chance at catching that fish, even on a follow-up bait more than likely, because that, that bait's gonna blow out of the water and you're just gonna miss your opportunity. So make sure you feel that fish before you set into them. Now, I think it's real critical to make long casts with a whopper plopper. And the reason being is that a whopper plopper is just kind of a big bait and it's gonna make a big splash. So I think getting that bait out there and especially getting that bait past your target and then bringing it to the target is a big key into getting more bites on a whopper plopper. So for instance, if you see that water ski white buoy out there, if I'm gonna cast, I wanna cast pretty, pretty past it pretty much far because it's going to come down it's going to make a big splash and now i'm just bringing that that uh, whopper plopper right past that ski buoy which is my target now obviously you're not going to be fishing ski buoys more than likely with this you might be fishing a lay down or a grass patch whatever it may be that's what i like to do i like to get that bait past it and bring it right up there to it and i think that again that's gonna help you to get more baits because if I take this bait and I'm casting at that target and I just land right on it, it's kind of a big splash. It might actually spook a fish. So just keep that in mind when you're whopper plopper fishing. Another thing that I really like to do when I'm also fishing this bait is to change up the speed. Yeah, a lot of times you can get bit on just slowly. Oh gosh, just like that. Holy. Golly, that fish just came out of nowhere. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Okay. Okay. I see you working fish. Definitely want to be careful with these guys when unhooking a fish on a whopper plopper. Well, as I was about to say, Sometimes you can get bit just reeling the whopper plopper in, just like this fish. That legitimately scared me a little bit. Um, sometimes you can get bit just reeling the bait in, but I really think it's important to every now and then just change up your speed when you're fishing the whopper plopper. And what I like to do a lot of times is I'm just reeling it in slowly. I like to just pop the bait with not my rod tip and just with my reel, just slow, just speed up the rod tip a little bit and it just kind of surges. And sometimes that can trigger fish to eating. Look at that fish, that is, that is just a thick, fat bass. Man, that was a lot of fun. It scared the crap out of me, but that was a lot of fun. Let's keep at it. I wanna give a big shout out to Columbus Barrel Company for sponsoring this video. Guys, I'm leaving a link in the description Go check out what they have to offer. Awesome hats, 
awesome products made out of old bourbon barrels. Really cool stuff. Check them out, columbusbarrelco.com. Before we continue with the video, guys, please go down, subscribe to the channel. Got a lot more content coming out. I know you're gonna like it. Thanks. But one of the most important things to remember when fishing the plopper is that if a fish misses it, always have a bait, I mean, ready to go right there as a follow-up bait. Now, one of the best follow-up baits that there's ever been created is just the wacky rigged Cinco type bait. And so I literally have this bait ready to go anytime I'm fishing any type of top water so that if a fish misses it, I can get back in there with the, the, the Cinco and just try to, try to place it right where that fish hit. And you'd be surprised just how many fish you actually catch. I got a bluegill or something right there. You would be surprised how many of those fish that miss that bait you actually get with a follow-up bait like a Cinco. I think it's really, I think it's better than trying to cast your Whopper Plopper back in there. If a fish missed that Plopper the first time, unless he's extremely active, there's a reason why he missed it. And that, there, there he is. Oh, I see, look at that. Oh, it just came off. That gummit. Well, I done lost that fish about four times. What I'm saying though, is that I think if the bass misses your Whopper Plopper, there's a reason. And that fish missed it twice. I actually casted several times back with the wacky rig. Finally got him to, to hook up on it and he just came off there. He was only about a pound, pound and a half fish, which is probably why he missed it. He just may have not had the, uh, the big enough mouth to really get that bait. But anyways, keep that in mind. Always have a follow-up bait, always. That is why you keep the follow-up bait. That's exactly why you gotta keep a follow-up bait ready. That fish missed that bait. Here we go. Gosh, it's kind of an ugly one. But guys, again, the fish missed the Whopper Plopper, you know, and this is probably the second one I've missed. So really, I think it's probably time to actually set the Whopper Plopper down and fish something else. Um, that's just the way it is sometimes, but I was able to cast this, uh, that Cinco right back at him and bam, was able to catch him. Again, if this was a tournament and I missed that fish and I keep throwing that Whopper Plopper, I don't, I don't think that that works well. I think that if they miss it, there's a reason and you want to get a different bait up out there at them and there's nothing better than just that wacky worm gotta love it gotta love the all tricks trolling motor i'm letting it get over to a, to a spot down the ways here but i wanted to say one little quick tip about a whopper plopper and that is a whopper plopper is a phenomenal bait at getting big fish to bite the problem is sometimes is hooking up with those fish. When this thing first came out, you could almost throw it and catch every fish in the lake. And that was amazing. But sometimes the fish don't tend to get this bait all the time. Sometimes they really get it, other times they don't. So one thing to know is if you're getting a lot of bites on a whopper plopper and they're not getting hooked up, switch over to a buzz bait. 
Sometimes a buzz bait with the toad versus the whopper plopper is actually gonna get those fish to bite and you're gonna hook them. So remember that when you're fishing a whopper plopper. Are you kidding me? That fish literally hit the bait underwater, I think. <laughs> oh gosh. Gotta be careful with these fish, especially these little ones, because they like to squirm. Oh gosh. Man, I'll tell you what, that Berkeley Fusion hook is legit. So there's several different sizes of whopper ploppers. You have the little guy, which is the 90. You have a little bit bigger than that, which is the 110. And then you have above that is the 130. You also have a size above the 130. I think it's like a 190. And then you also have another smaller whopper plopper. And this is the 70. But the biggest difference in these baits is really just the size of the bait. Most of them, except for, and I just dropped it, most of these baits, except for the 90, make almost the exact same kind of sound, if you will. Now, the bigger the bigger the bait, it does have a little bit more of a deeper plop. Um, but for the most part, most of these baits are going to make a similar sound, except for the 90. Now, the original sizes were the 110, the 130, and the 90. And the 90 is a, a unique bait. I don't fish the 90 a whole lot, but I feel like there are times there's times when they hit the 90 and they won't hit anything else. But what I have found with the 90 is that sometimes the hookup ratio, which is, this is a weird thing to me, but although this is the smaller bait, the hookup ratio doesn't tend to be as good as some of the bigger baits, which I don't really understand that, but it just seems to be that way. And so you have the 90, the 110, the 130. I'm gonna tell you to fish the 110 most of the time. The 110 uh, is a great, bait um, it's not too big it's not too small it's really just right so when it comes to colors i really only see there being a few color choices that you really need and that's some sort of bone color like this um, and or a shad type color um, then one of my favorites that i fish a lot is the translucent color um, so i'm not even sure what the name of this particular one is i know another translucent color that a lot of people like is called monkey butt so you have your like your bone or your white color you have your translucent color and then the only other color you really need is probably black and so that's going to really be enough to do what you need to do when it comes to whopper plopper fishing so anytime i'm fishing the 70 or the 90 i'm going to use like a lighter top water rod it's going to be a seven foot medium action rod i'm going to use 30 pound braid and that's going to be a perfect setup for those smaller baits now when i step up to the 110 which is what i throw most of the time i like a seven foot three inch medium heavy to heavy action rod and i like 50 pound braid i don't usually go up past 50 pound but i really like 50 pound braid and you kind of you might be sitting there thinking well you're using treble hooks on a bait why do you use a, a stiffer rod? And, and to be honest, the, the key with fishing a whopper plopper, when you get bit and when you set the hook on that fish is really try to get, this is such a big bait that you really wanna to try to get that fish up on top of the water and literally just ski that fish in. That's the best way to land fish on one of these, on one of these things. So the 110, again, I like a seven foot three inch medium heavy to heavy action rod. When I go up to the 130, <clears throat> that's when I start throwing a seven foot six inch medium heavy to heavy action rod. And again, 50 pound braid. For real, I really like anything in the seven uh, speed range. So uh, whether that's a 7.1 to one, a 7.3 to one, a 7.5 to one, something in that range is what I really think to be the, probably about the best when it comes to whopper plopper fishing. <laughs>